So today I'll be talking about something about intravenous anesthesia. There are some residents also for the benefit of those. A little bit pharmacokinetics, the various models, the interactions, how to use the TCI and what's the need of automation and what are the basic concepts and capabilities of this closed loop system which is being made. This is the photograph from uh, Mass General Hospital more than 150 years ago when the first anesthesia was given, demo was given for uh, uh, by Morton. But that was inhalation anesthesia and that has been going on since uh, uh, those days using one inhalation, inhalation aesthetic agent and uh, uh, deepening, uh, deepening the anesthesia to the various stages based on the different concentrations of uh, that being used. Till in this century, you know, with the development of last century, with the development of the local anesthetics, regional anesthesia and the intravenous anesthetic agents. Now, uh, we are using intravenous anesthetic agents to induce the patients keep, and then later on to maintain either intravenous or inhalation anesthetic agent. And usually they are being controlled based on the predetermined dosages, alteration of the movement of the patients in response to stimuli, surgical stimuli, and nowadays, uh, in addition to blood pressure, heart rate responses from the process EEG uh, uh, monitors. So, the, though the propofol was developed, uh, was put into use in the mid-80s, mid-70s uh, mid last uh, uh, century, but uh, the maintenance use of propofol for maintenance of anesthesia became popular only in the late 80s or 90s and especially with the development of the short-acting uh, analgesics like alfentanil and remfentanil and you know where there are three components of anesthesia, the analgesia, hypnosis and then muscle relaxation. So uh, we have different, three different drugs being used to achieve uh, one uh, uh, goal that is anesthesia and no response to the painful stimuli and the patient lying comfortably in the table when the surgeon is operating. And uh, people are using partial intervening anesthesia just to lower the concentration of inhalation aesthetic agents, uh, decrease the use of those inhalation aesthetic agents. And why they want to decrease the inhalation aesthetic agents? They want to, they, the, the worry about pollution in the atmosphere, in the OT, as well as the inhalation aesthetic being, uh, you know, blamed for the greenhouse, greenhouse effect as well as for the you know, uh, uh, dis uh, the destroying the ozone layer and, uh, uh, you know, retaining that it's a heating uh, 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 effect by preventing the, uh, you know, the loss of heat uh, through the atmosphere. And they have very high, uh, uh, you know, lifetime, like nitrous oxide, something like 114 years, something you put into the atmosphere and remain there for a century at least and similarly for other agents though less than as compared to don't think that uh, propofol is also is not a pollutant to the atmosphere because the plastic syringes which we use sometimes the propofol which is left or which is you know thrown into the uh, into the gutter so these they, there are hazards but the hazards of uh, propofol is one fourth of uh, what the hazards of the inhalation aesthetic agents is so there are specific indications for which intravenous anesthesia, total intravenous anesthesia was, has been in practice, recommended. Uh, neurosurgery, patients with malignant hyperthermia, patients who are undergoing neurophysiological monitoring. And more so when you transfer an anesthetized patient from one place to other, uh, you can't carry the inhalation anesthetic agents along with you. So it's easy to have an intravenous anesthesia. We know the advantages so less emetic, rapid recovery, and especially in the onco surgery, this has been claimed to have uh, you know decreases the chances of recurrence, though it's still not well proven. But uh, there are lots of studies, and of course, as I already told, the lesser global warming and no an un un adverse effect to the theatre staff by leakage of the gases, even if you use low flow anesthesia. But still, we are using very low incidence. So, so, so the people are not using. Why the people are not using? We need to look into that. Is it technical issues? Is it the cost? Is it the ethical issues? Is it the you know lack of trained teachers, or you know the surgeons don't want them to use? I don't know. But I think one of the major reason 
of using inhalation aesthetic agent in uh, by anesthetist is uh, easy to monitor. Whenever you give a drug, whether it is IV anesthetic or inhalation aesthetic, it is goes into the body either through the blood directly or through the lungs and concentration is achieved. And this concentration uh, uh, decreases either by elimination, metabolism or distribution to the other uh, tissues than the blood. While it is being uh, uh, reaching the fact site concentration, simultaneously is the concentration decreasing either by distribution or metabolism, and uh, it produces clinical effect. Now, inhalation aesthetic agents by antidal CO2, antidal inhalation aesthetic agent monitoring can give an idea of what's happening in the blood. And uh, once you have a some relation established, this much concentration produces this much effect you can anticipate that uh, this much drug is going to produce this much effect and uh, you are monitoring continuously if this increases or decreases, uh, you can adjust accordingly. Of course, uh, 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 that's an, in addition to that, there are so many other things which I said, the movement of the patient, the blood pressure, heart rate, that also stimulates the uh, anesthetist to alter the drugs, concentration, inhalation aesthetic concentration. But this doesn't happen with IV anesthetic. You have to assume that this much of drug is going to produce this much of concentration based on the models which are available in the literature, which may not be applicable to your patient. And so, in addition to what that concentration in a given patient is producing its effect, you are not sure what actually the concentration is there. The metabolism may be altered by liver, kidney issues, Distribution may be altered by hypovolemia, hypovolemia, organ dysfunctions. So all those things, and there's no way you can uh, monitor the propofol concentration. There are now uh, some experimental studies going on. There is a practical issues, but still it takes a couple of minutes uh, to, you know, online analysis. And that also is not very uh, uh, accurate at this point of time. So I think that's one reason. Uh, in the absence of any clinical effect monitoring facility under anesthesia with muscle relaxant and no concentration, uh, you know, uh, monitoring of the uh, propofol or any other drug which are fentanyl, etc., which you're giving. So that's the reason I feel that uh, people are afraid of using total anesthesia unless they have a good monitoring facility. Whatever drug we use, whether for analgesia, whether for anesthesia or whether for neuromuscular blockade, we always see this is what is the ideal thing. It should not have organ toxicity, the standard thing, rapidly acting, predictable action, shorter duration, quick elimination, etc., etc.